that's changing. Okay. So my talk is on um, external APIs with React and SWR, uh, which is a Vercel library. And if you're not familiar with Vercel, they create Next. So they kind of know what they're doing, I think. Um, Guy, I'm a developer here at CommerceJS. I'm a full stack. I've always been a full stack, but more recently I've been working pretty much exclusively on front front end stuff. Although I still love the back end challenges, so it's hard to keep me away from it. Uh, you can probably tell from my accent that I'm originally from New Zealand, so excuse me when I say strange words and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm an open source advocate. I previously worked for a company where I was hired to do open source work, which is an incredibly amazing experience, and I would encourage it for everybody, although it can also be incredibly frustrating to deal with people. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, and I work with React quite a lot, but not as much as I like, because mostly I'm working with Vue, which I definitely don't like as much as React. <laughs> so what is SWR? Well, it's a hooks library, so um, it's actually not even really a hooks library. You can kind of use the concept outside of React, but when you install Vercel SWR, you get a hook, essentially, which you can use in your React code. Uh, it means stale while revalidate. So uh, it's based on a caching validation strategy, which says that if you have a stale cache, you can still present that to, your, to whoever's viewing your data, and then you can go and revalidate in the background that it is up to date, and then you can refresh kind of seamlessly with the update up to date data when it is fetched. So users will see the cache data, and then yeah, they will it'll be updated. So what does it actually look like when we when we write some React code? Uh, and here is a typical case you would do at the moment where you're interfacing with an external API. So in my, because I'm a commerce JS developer. My examples are using shopping carts, right? So you would go and you would create your page component, which is like a top level component or a high level component. Um, and then you have your state that you set up, which is use cart, set cart, whatever. Uh, then you've got the side effects, which will go and fetch the API and update the cart. When, when, and you make sure that you put those bloody square brackets in to say only do it once, please, not on every render. Uh, and then you do at this point, you could like put it into Redux, or you could use something else, um, like maybe React Context, or in this case, I'm just doing prop drilling, which everybody's probably experienced, where you're like passing your cart down like 17 components until it gets to the right spot. So yeah, that's the example at the moment. And then the style of validate example is you can create a custom hook that uses this crazy use SWR hook which says, uh, go and fetch a cart from this API, and then just magically keep it in state, and then return that cart. And then you'll notice here that we've actually completely removed the idea of the top level page component, and we're just using the cart directly in our navbar component. And what will happen is that SWR will take care of deduping requests, so like if you have a whole bunch of side effects or whatever, or components, it's not even side effects, that are using this cart, it will automatically figure out that it's gone, okay, within this render cycle, essentially, you've asked the cart four times, that's one request, uh, fetch it once. If I have it in state, I'll even show it to you immediately and then still fetch it in the background and then provide it to you. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what it looks like. And then this, this thing down at the bottom here, which I've just put in, is you do need to kind of tell SWR how to communicate with your API. So. This is the default value down here, which is just using window.fetch, which hopefully everyone's heard of. Um, but there's more that you get with stay or revalidate. It's not just like the side effect hook that I mentioned. So because it's based on a cache and validation strategy, they have put a little bit of thought into invalidating the cache, which some of you might know is one of the hardest problems in computer science. Um, so by default, uh, it will cache invalidate, like it will go and revalidate caches on mount. Uh, you can also configure it so that when like they focus the window, it goes and checks to see if the if the cache is still valid. That's really helpful in the cart example because I'm sure people have done shopping before and they like 
going down a list of products and like opening a new tab, everything, and being like, I'm just going to validate all of these products. And then they switch between their tabs and they add one to cart. But then when they switch back to an old tab, the cart doesn't have their item in it because it's like they did that in a different tab. But this is saying you can set it so when you focus on a new tab, it's going to go and check that cart again. It's going to be, oh, there's something new. The cache is invalid. Update. Right? So, yeah. So that's kind of what you get. Or on Reconnect, which is like new age browser APIs here that probably don't work. Um, yeah. So, when should you use SWR? Because it's not, you, it's not like a silver bullet, use it everywhere. Um, static generation, especially in the context of Next.js, is always the right call uh, for most data, right? Like for instance, my examples here are content from a CMS. So like you, as a site owner, control your content. You don't want to fetch an API every single time for your site content. You just want to do that once when you deploy your site or when you change your content, right? So static generation, which usually happens at build time, is how you do that, right? And again, it's similar for a product catalog, which is essentially a different form of content, right? But it's great for transient data. So something like authentication, like I've logged in, or I haven't logged in, <laughs> um, shopping carts, anything that's live, like logs, like orders coming in, bookings, all that sort of stuff. Transient data is great. So uh, there's also some other cool features you get. So this, uh, what you can do with SWR is you can kind of take control of invalidating and updating the cache yourself, right? And if people have heard about optimistic updating with UIs, this kind of ties in closely with that idea, right? Where optimistic updating says, I'm going to update a, a store or something using an API, but I can assume what the response will be because I know enough about it that I can just immediately show the change and like update the UI with the change and just assume that the optimistic that the server response will be positive. So that's what you can do with style where we validate here. So what you can do is you can change our hook that we created earlier, which uses SWR to include this mutate craziness that kind of comes out of SWR. And you can just pretend that I put it into the return statement here. Obviously, I forgot to put it in there, but it's there. Um, and then we can create another hook, which essentially just gives us an update function. So this is using uh, the memoize callback function uh, hook, I guess, which is part of React, which says we can memoize a function based on some uh, dependencies. It's a little bit like use effect, except we're creating callbacks instead. And then what we can say is we can mutate as actually a function, and we can say we're going to go and update the cart with this data that we have, and we pass the second parameter false, which just says, and don't validate that I'm correct, right? Because if you just use the mutate function to say this is what the data is, SWR is going to be like, okay, and I'll check that with the server too, because I don't believe you. But what we have to be is like, no, we can be like, actually, but don't check it with the server, please. I haven't done that yet. And then the next step is to actually go and update the server. So I've just put in using fetch here to put a put, do a put request uh, in the true restful way. Uh, and saying that's what the cart is. And then the final step is to update the cache again with the updated data. So there's, a, there's three options here, right? Like we can actually, maybe the API gives us the cart as a response. If it's restful, hopefully it will because that's what they should do. Um, so we can just immediately update the cart with the response from the update call. We can not pass mutate any arguments and then it will just go and be like, okay, I'll go fetch it. Or we can just be like, we're not going to call mutate again and we're just going to trust that we are right the first time, which is an option. I'm not sure why you do that, but I guess if you're like really confident. Um, there's a couple more things we can do to make it even faster. So uh, the first one, this, this one actually is really interesting because it actually has nothing to do with React at all. This is just um, native HTML where we can go in and we can say, I'm going to be making this XHR request at some point later on. Can you preempt me and just do it immediately and then make that information available for me when I eventually do? So essentially we're saying here, we've got a link, so it's like a CSS style sheet, except it's, we're just saying it's a preload call instead. 
we're saying we're going to go and fetch, do a get request to cart, and it's going to be a fetch request, right? Which is essentially saying it's an XHR statement we're making in the future. Um, you can also do cross-origin requests with this, but if you have cross-origin requests that require authentication, it gets kind of a bit confusing and more complicated. So the best option here is to do, just not do cross-origin, and if you're using something like Next, you can use their serverless functions to set up proxies or whatever you need to do to, to avoid cross-origin requests. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can use static, no, server-side rendering. <laughs> I can never remember the acronym. <laughs> server-side rendering with Next.js, which is different from static site generation. So there's SSG and SSR, and they're different. This one is server-side rendering, which happens on every request. Uh, I mentioned SSG before, which is not relevant because that usually happens once per build, which is obviously going to give you stale data. But in this case, uh, server-side rendering happens on the server side before it serves the request originally for the page. So you can use, this is a next, next JS example, where you can use get server-side props to essentially fetch the cart on the server side, and then pass it through as the props to your eventual component. And then you can actually say, we will use that cart coming from the server as the initial state of SWR, and it won't go and fetch it the first time it's asked for will only fetch it in any of those invalidation scenarios we talked about before. Uh, yeah, and then it's just a little bit, you can see that there's an initial data option that you can kind of add to the SWR hook. So there's a couple of additional niceties in SWR. So they have like a few pagination features, including infinite scroll, so it will automatically kind of track your index and keep that all in cache uh, with the page numbers. Uh, it supports the experimental React Suspense feature API, which I'm not sure what people are familiar with, but I think React are like maybe deciding not to do that. So I don't know, maybe that's helpful, maybe that isn't. Uh, but, and it also supports custom caches, which is quite interesting because you can use something like local storage to like kind of assist it for a bit longer if that's the kind of thing you want for your data. Or like maybe local storage is shared across tabs as well, so you can do some fancy stuff there. Yeah, like you can actually completely take control of it. You can even cache on an API if you wanted to, I guess. But I don't know why you do that. Yeah, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. So I mean, the reason I'm talking about this is Commerce JS is all about giving you unopinionated JavaScript APIs to create whatever commerce experience you want. And we have an in development React hooks library that uses SWR with carts to try and really push this performance benefit, especially when using it with Next. So there's still a few tweaks we need to do to our SWR implementation, especially after I was researching some of the stuff in this talk. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much SWR. So yeah, thank you. And I hope you all get a chance to check it out if you're using external APIs. <laughs>